Abnor's log. As I sit down to write this log, I can't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. The war with Austria-Hungary has been over for some time now, and we've been enjoying a long period of peace. It's been a welcome change of pace after years of conflict. During this time, I have been able to focus on upgrading our ships and working on naval innovations. We've made great strides in improving our naval technology, and I'm proud of what we've accomplished. One of the best things about this period of peace is that our sailors and officers have been able to spend more time with their families. No longer are they constantly on six months deployments, far away from their loved ones. It's heartening to see them all together, happy and content. Of course, I do know that peace is never guaranteed, and we must always be ready to defend our nation if necessary. But for now, I'm grateful for this time of calm and progress. Hey guys, still here and welcome to episode 17. It's been a couple years. It is now November 1923 and I have been at peace for quite a while. This has allowed me to refit some of my ships as the entire Japanese Navy is back home. Does this mean that peace has restored to, has, well, has been restored to the world? Absolutely not. Because it seems that most of the AI empires are run by war-hungry leaders. The Italians, for example, are just launching a major invasion <laughs> into France, because that's what the Italians do. So the Italians are pushing with 1.7 million people into southwestern France, which is, or southern France, which is defended by 417,000. Um, I don't know, we're, st we're still playing Grand Admiral Dreadnoughts, or Grand... General Dreadnoughts? Ultimate General? I'm not even sure what the game's called anymore. Um, this is not the only war that's been happening. It's been an absolute madhouse, and I simply haven't been part of it. If I scroll down to my reputation, I'm still allied with France, but I'm not actually at war with anybody. My relationship with the British has been soured pretty badly, and I'm slowly but steadily cruising towards a war with the Russians. The other nations are all minus 25, except for China. China really likes me, and China has been trying to butter me up quite for some time. The Republic of China keeps trying to promote their agenda or what have you. Um, they are also seemingly in the progress of rebuilding their fleet, building 44 new ships. I, by contrast, am building five. I wouldn't be surprised, however, if my five ships kind of well, are probably as heavy as 44 of theirs. Because the ships that I'm currently building are a couple of heavy cruisers. Now, these guys aren't that big. It's 13,000 tons of the Sanosama class. I'm also commissioning a couple of these ships. And I am building the Shimane and the Yashima. These ships are coming in at 114,000 tons. Or, well, they will be eventually. The rest of the battleships are all ready. They're finished. They're good to go. Some of them do need a refit every now and then, like the Makahos from 1920. The Kayos are uh, a bit old as well, 1918. So I do need to do some overhauling every now and then. And then meanwhile, as the peace, well, the sort of peace dividends is pu uh, paying off, I am working on researching new tech. When it comes to big guns, I'm at Mark 16, no, Mark 2, 16 inches. And for rangefinders, I just got the stereoscopic. Uh, no, Coincidence 5. So this is likely going to be Stereoscopic 5. After that, I am expecting Radar Rangefinders. Control stations are getting upgraded, which will give me, again, higher base accuracy, which is really welcome. Um, <clears throat> anyway, not talking about research that much. What's happening in the world? Well, the Brits... The Brits are at war with, basically, everybody. They're at war with the Germans. It... It's not going to take that much more before they actually get to war with the Americans. That would be a conflict I would be very interested to see. The Russians, so-and-so. The Italians, they're pissed off with. They did try an invasion of an Italian province and it didn't work out. Um, the United States hates France. And these guys have been duking it out for some time. They're also about to declare war on Austria-Hungary. The Italians, as said, are at war with the British and the French, but also with the Chinese, and soon with the Austro-Hungarians. Uh, considering that France is their western neighbor and this is their eastern neighbor, I think it's probably not in their best interest to go to war with Austria-Hungary, but it's entirely up to them. 
Uh, the Russians are at war with the Spanish. Now, this is another one of those battles where you go, why on earth would the Russians want to provoke these guys? What do they gain? And the answer is, for me, I really don't know. Um, what is also quite interesting is that you got the Strait of Gibraltar. I already highlighted this before. It's controlled from Gibraltar by the British. So the Germans and the Italians are no longer allowed passage through the Gibraltar Strait. Now, compare that to the fact that um, the British are at war with Italy. So if the British want to push into Italian ships, they can just use the strait. If the Italians want to push back, well, they're going to take the long way around. They are going to go all the way around Africa and a bunch of Italian ships are doing exactly that. It's going to take them a long, long, long time. And uh, for some reason, again, ships are going to the Caribbean, but I don't know why. Maybe these Italian ships are going there to go and do battle with the British fleet that's housed here. I don't know. Anyway, the world's a bit of a mess. Uh, the victory point system is also a bit of a mess because this just keeps getting handed over to whoever goes to war next. <laughs> it really makes very little sense. But there are wars happening all over the place. Except Asia. Asia is where I rule. And I am trying to provoke the Russians. I'm doing unrestricted submarine operations right next to Moskalvo over there. I have a group over here next to Petropavlovsk, which seemingly has a bunch of ships. Let's just go a little closer, shall we? We're not at war, so I can still approach that minefield. I'm trying to block off Vladivostok. But nobody's really doing anything. These submarine encounters, or the submarines here, it's like there's absolutely no traffic going into or coming out of Vladivostok or any of the other ports here. So as much as I try to provoke the Russians, Beyond risking my reputation by hitting the increased tension, there's not that much that I can do. Fortunately, I have a very, very high naval prestige. So just every now and then pushing that button saying increased tensions is not a problem. Still, um, all these factions warring it out with each other is, in a way, favorable to my situation. Because I'm still allied with the French, so I don't have to worry about their ships. The French and the British, I believe, don't get along that well. It's only 49, so they're not allied. Which means that if at some point the British were to push my buttons and go to minus 100 AE war, then that would mean that they're probably not going to have that many friends in the Pacific theater, or the Asian theater for that matter. So I would be able to start doing all sorts of nasty operations over here in India as well as some of their other territories, such as uh, over here in Penang, Malacca. I can take over northern Borneo. There's a lot of territory up for grabs. So ideally, I would also start pissing off the Brits. And, uh, well, the British only have 59 ships, which they're spreading out over two different wars. And they're repairing another 68. How these guys maintain their war economy with a massive growth of GDP, I have absolutely no idea. Anyway, that's the update. Now let's wait until something interesting happens. June 1924. Prepare for trouble. A serious incident has occurred which involves the Soviet Union. One of their profound politicians was assassinated. Here we go again. I am very reluctant to give the Soviet $350 million, so no, war it is. Now this does mean that my reputation with the British gets repaired somewhat, but I at least have something to shoot at. I mean, I have a further expansion of the Japanese territories planned. So let's see, who do I want to go after first? What port? Lord of Vostok is massive, 240,000 tons. It is part of the Russian Far East, which is defended by 1.1 million soldiers. That is a lot. 
if I want to try and do a naval landing here, I'm probably going to have to bring... I think my entire fleet, which is a million tons of ships. I'm probably going to need every single ship in that particular spot just to satisfy the requirement for getting that province. Um, North Sakhalin is defended by 110,000 and has the port of Mescalvo, which is 62,000 tons. So that's interesting. Petropavlovsk, 101,000 tons, and it does seem to hold a sizable portion of the Russian fleet. Speaking of the Russian fleet, what can we expect? Three battleships, 11 battle cruisers, 25 CAs, 40 CLs, 155 destroyers, and five subs. So, 155 destroyers, but more importantly, are they going to be here? Are those destroyers hiding out in my territory? And I believe the answer to be no. There are 13 destroyers there, there's 9 destroyers, or 9 light cruisers over there, and over here there is absolutely nothing. So, unless the Russians want to sail all the way around with a whole bunch of ships, and uh, no, these are going the other way, they are moving a bunch of ships around, to be sure, but, oh, here comes the destroyer group. Oh, this would be a massive fight. Uh, oh, there's the rest. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to try and go on submarine mining duty again. So, the islands here, around Formosa, they already have submarines. All I need to do is wait for the minefields to get deployed. And on top of that, I can move 20 submarines to Pusan. Which is where... I'm not going to pick Pusan and Sasebo. Which is where they tend to pass through when they're on their way through the Sea of Japan to go to the Sea of uh, Okotsk. So... Let's retask some submarines to these two ports and make life very difficult on the Jap oh, sorry, on the Japanese, no. Um, on the Russian fleets that are moving back and forth. Sadly, you can still only move submarines in very, very small groups. So let's say six there, six there. And I'm gonna keep a small scattering here. Although my reputation with this Chinese is so good. I'm actually more likely to go into an alliance with them. Now, let's see if I can intercept these cruisers. It's six heavies and seven lights. I have never seen the Russian cruisers, so I don't know what they're capable of. But we're going to just push out the whole fleet right over there. And... Really? Oh, I cannot push the whole fleet out because there's too many ships. Let's see. This is an outdated Makaho class. This is a Nigitsu? Wow. That thing is from 1910. 14 years old. Ah, yes, the Kayo would be a good choice here. And the Senyo, yeah, I also sent that. I also want a bunch of heavy cruisers to be out there. Because if I'm going to be fighting light cruisers, I want my own heavy cruisers. I know what they're capable of. I designed those myself. So we're going to send a couple of heavy cruisers to meet me there. I'll also bring a light. Where is my fleet? That is Yokosuka, I think. Where is my fleet? Two heavies. Shokai and Kumano. We got some ships over there. Is this defended? 12,000 guys. 110,000 for the Russians. Okay. Well, that's going to make my life very interesting. When it comes to the rest... I believe I have everything here. Where is the Nagitsu? I'm going to scuttle that ship. That's the last of the Nagitsus, I think. Yeah, off you go. The rest are uh, Mikahos and two Kayos. The Shimane is still getting built. This is my super battleship coming in at eventually 114,000 tons, but she's still six months out from uh, completion. The battle cruisers are mostly hiding out in Port Arthur and around Germany. I have considered pulling the group from Germany back. But my reputation with the Germans isn't going that well. So I am kind of expecting something to spark there. And to eventually have to fight the Germans yet again. Now, I think building out more submarines and just trying to damage as many of these guys with mines would be very beneficial. 
So let's go for coastal mine layer submarines featuring 12 mines. The alternative is 16 mines or 24. And we also have ocean going submarines which carry more torpedo tubes. But beyond that aren't very spectacular. So um, coastal, no mine layer submarines, 24 mines. Yeah, let's get a bunch of mine laying submarines. I'll take 20 of those. It's only going to cost me 5 million. And I'm once again getting my nice little war bonus of about 160 million. So let's start assembling the fleet and let's see which of these Russians would like to go first. One month later, the British also go to war against the Soviets. So the Soviet Union, oh, and again, <laughs> against the United States. Um, against these guys, the British should have their hands full. And the Russians might actually not be able to start reinforcing the area here so that I'll be able to ideally hold on to the territory. Now they are trying to launch an invasion into Manchuria with an army that's almost 3 million men. When I just checked, it was 1.1 and then they did a mobilization and now it's 3 million. So yeah, they were able to mobilize about 2 million guys in one month. Which is pretty intimidating, but here we are. Uh, they're going to push on Manchuria, which is getting currently defended by 559,000 guys. I have a population of 32 million. I wouldn't be surprised if we're suddenly going to find a whole bunch more. Um, so, I don't know, maybe there's suddenly going to be an uprising of uh, Japanese armed forces in Manchuria. Well, uprising isn't quite the right term, but, you know, I'm suddenly going to find more people there. Ooh, transports. And one DD. Watch all of my submarines die. Yes? No? Yes. Two heavy damage, one sunk, one light destroyer damage. Alright, so the Soviets are leading the charge with two victory points versus 52. Is there more coming this way? Yes. There is. Are you too full, perhaps? 6,900 men. How many do you have, then? Ah, uh, yes. Division's too big. Um, I cannot command this many ships. That's the problem. So, we're going to push... I'd say a bunch of heavy cruisers with battleships. So, something like this. And the other two I'll keep spare. As for the rest, I do have more in Port Arthur. And I think it would be a good time to mobilize. So they're going to go over there. That's Mikaho, Taibo, and Senyo. And I'm going to start sending out more ships, if at all available. I got the five DDs over there. Let's have those assist. And I think that's about it. Ogami and her escorts can link up there. And hopefully that will fit into another div. Over here we got six heavies and seven lights. And something else. I suspect submarine. So, the Russians definitely have some stuff over here. And this invasion, I'm not very happy about. I'm really wondering to see, or really curious to see where that's going to go. Here we are building minefields, but it's going to take a while. Our mine lane capacity supposedly is zero, even though I have a couple of submarines there. Uh, same here. And same here. So, why my mine lane cap is zero, I don't quite understand. When it comes to my shipbuilding capacity, I can now have 365,000 tons getting worked on at the same time. So, considering that the enemy is using a bunch of heavy cruisers and light cruisers, I think a few more Sanosawas would be nice to have. The Sanosawas from 1923 have been upgraded, or the Sanosawas from 1920 have been upgraded to 1923 standards, and I'm now going to make a copy of this design. And supposedly you're able to instantly start building these. So this is going to be the Tsurugi class. And that should save me the time from having to build a Sanosawa. And then refit it. Because this is going to take 16 months. This is also going to take 16 months. But it's just the upgraded variant. I don't believe I have any further updates for these ships. They got their defenses right. Uh, two powder is fine. Semi-auto loaders. Yeah, I think we're good. Hydro 3, Quinson's Rangefinder 5. It should be good. Save the design. So now, let's start working on this guy. 
and get a couple more heavy cruisers built. This is going to take me a year and change. So I'm not even sure if they're going to be ready by the time that the war is still going. Maybe I have won by then. But they're going to be useful anyway. Because they're good hulls. They're good ships. They're versatile. They can engage almost anything. Even a battleship at range. And still inflict a lot of damage. So even if I don't fight the Russians in the end, they might still be coming in useful. Let's, let's build five. It's going to fill up a bit more shipbuilding capacity. And as for the Shimane, another five months. Can we fit her with bigger guns yet? Yes and no. Um, this is, by the way, real time that it takes loading the research screen. But otherwise the game is perfectly optimized. The ship is going to eventually be getting 17-inch guns, potentially a little bigger. Maybe 16 Mark II. I'd rather have 16 Mark II than 17-inch Mark I. But I'm really hoping for 16 or 15-inch Mark III as a sort of fill the gap. But what the game decides to want to research, I don't really have an influence on. So, let's see. What Russian task force am I going to fight? Because I want to fight one of their bigger groups and immediately deliver a hammer blow. A month later, the Soviets also launched from North Sakhalin against South Sakhalin. So I can now ex start expend or expect a group to start trying to take over here. I got 27,000 guys. They had 100,000 or something. Now it's 250k. As for here, I have been gaining some guys, um, and especially the French have been helpful. The Russians have lost 100,000 guys already. Um, my army seems to be growing, not shrinking. Now, let's have a look at this convoy here. Um, I have absolutely no idea why my ships from Helgoland are over here. It just makes no sense to me. I didn't order them to do this. I didn't tell them, hey, go hunting transports. They just decided to do that all on their own accord. What they find is the Borodino, a battlecruiser Kazan, a couple of cruisers, and 11 transports. Now these guys pack 14.3s, they pack 9.3s on a battlecruiser. 26 knots, 20 knots, 25 knots, 29 knots, light cruiser's quick. A little more expensive as well. No, not really. 6 inch go. <laughs> Cute little ship. Um, what about the destroyer? 33 knots with six torpedoes and one gun. Wow. Minehunter kit two. <clears throat> My ships, by contrast, can do 30 knots and are armed with eight 13 inch guns as well as a bunch of four inch. Let's take the fight to the Russians. Again, why we're here? I don't know. It's just the game that decided to send these ships out of Helgoland because. I sure as hell didn't do it. But I welcome the opportunity to blow the Russian economy up some by sinking a whole bunch of their transports. And getting some victory points would be a nice bonus. I might already be spotted. I'm not sure. Sea state is good. So if I am ideally able to start... Oh, radio direction finding is working. Um, I want to just sail short of perpendicular. I'm going to keep an eye on southwest. Or sorry, uh, southeast, because that's where their battleship is. So that is also where we're going to find the rest of it. What is this? This is some sort of Nelson-esque thing. Could be a player design ship. I haven't seen those in a while. Chance to hit, 4.8%. I think HE is a pretty good idea right now. Because we're looking at a bow in ship, and if this is player designed and it's that heavily armed on the bows, it is probably going to be armored very, very well from the bow. So I want to try and get as much fire damage in as possible. Because I kind of suspect the rest isn't going to work. I'm not even sure AG is going to work, because I don't seem to hit the thing. Regular crew, regular crew, season crew. Maintain pressure on this. Secondaries on that. Oh. 
destroyer seemingly having a bad day. Let's see. What are you then? Oh, you're the battleship. My bad. This one, that's the secondary. This is the new battle. Packing the 9-inch guns. Normally, I'd say a 9-inch ship is not that big of a threat. But a 9-inch gun can still do some pretty nasty things to my ships. It can probably still deal some pretty serious damage. Ah, now we're getting some damage in on the battleships, including against their main guns. That's interesting. The 4-inch guns range out to 7.5 clicks. So the 7-inch guns... Sorry, the 4-inch guns are now going to engage their destroyer. And as much as I would like to take out the transports, I would rather keep all of my capital ships intact. So we're going to have to do some ranged combat here. Let's see, what's your chance to pen me? Yeah, pretty good. The battle cruiser? Not though. Not so good. Alright, you, however... Oh, you're a heavy cruiser with 8-inch guns. Could be better shells, though. Damage the main gun. I don't like this. Oh, it has a torpedo range of 4. So it's not that big of a deal. Now, I know if I slow down, I'll get more accuracy. I'm not going to do that, though. Because I don't want to lose my speed advantage. And if I slow down, I will lose that speed advantage. So I'm intently not slowing down to cruise speed to get more accuracy. Because I don't seem to need more accuracy. Also, I just destroyed a main gun. Which one? The second one, the B turret's gone. And the world center. What? You died? <laughs> okay. That was... <laughs> that was faster than expected. Uh, that was the HE. Oh, they're being... <laughs> they're being crewed by cadets. Oh, boy. I guess these cadets hadn't completed their uh, damage control yet. <laughs> nice work. Nice work, the Russian bear. Oh boy. <laughs> Focus fire on that. Put your secondaries on this, please. Oh boy. Maintain HE pressure. Although, maybe we can just punch right through. The oh, we can punch right through this thing with HE. <laughs> what is this? I'm destroying main guns with high explosive shells. These aren't that lethal high explosive shells. What are they? High capacity. <laughs> They're the weakest high explosive shells that I can get. Right? <laughs> okay. They're the weakest high explosive shells. Oh boy. Oh, they haven't hit they haven't hit me once? <laughs> and I've already killed a battleship? That's gold. Boom. Flooding. You want, dude. We're we punching holes in the CA. No, that's their battle cruiser. But the CA here happens to get in the way. Flooding. Trained. This crew's better. Ah, they've done some damage. Okay, you're gonna switch your fire over to this guy. Oh, now all of you are. Uh, that's fine. The battle cruiser only has a one percent chance to hit. The heavy and the light cruiser are probably going to be remarkably more dangerous. Because they would be sporting torpedoes, I suspect. Out to... Well, I'm in range. So sink this thing quick. You don't... Oh, flash fire. You're dead. Sink this thing quick. Then we're going to go on to the next light cruiser. Did you kill that with a forage? No, a 13. Alright. Never works. Go on. HE. Boom. That's your light cruiser gone. Secondary is on this. A DD is trailing. Not a threat. Aruna did take some damage. Got penned by an 8 inch. That's probably the heavy cruiser. Finish it off. And let this heavy cruiser get some damage in on the battle cruiser. I do not accept that. Finish. Mm, pretty badly burning. 23% crew lost. This guy. 
Come on, put the secondaries to work. Main guns. Now getting really uncomfortably close. I think it only has port and starboard torpedo launchers, but I'm not willing to find out. Armor, so and so. It's flooding badly now. Standard bulkheads. Ooh, come on, get some damage in. What are you doing back here? So, oh, there we go. I thought you were basically out of the fight. Flooding. Okay, we're good. Yep, light cruiser dead. Focus on this. AP shells, please. It's pretty nicely angled. 33% chance to pen. Yeah, we can get a couple of holes in on this guy. Secondaries on this. Boom. Flooding. Buoyancy dropping to sub 60, sub 50. Ooh. That was bad. You're gone. Next. 13% chance to pen? What the hell? Really? Ooh, torpedo sailed past. I didn't even notice that. Well, I'm getting partial pens, but the damage is good. Boom! You dead. Extensive fire. Um, cease fire on the main guns, please. Secondaries are allowed to finish this off, but I'm going to keep the Bayon alive. Because I still have transports to murder. And these guys kind of got in the way. So I'll let the secondaries work over the destroyer to make sure that this thing doesn't chase me down and blow me up. And the heavy cruiser is probably not going to go anywhere quickly anyway. Hello. You, my friend, are my target. Because that's free victory points right there. What do you want, little guy? What's the plan? What is the objective? You're focusing your fire on the Haruna, which is the trailing. Okay. You got a half a percent chance to pen. This is why I put some uh, armor on my secondary, on my, uh, my superstructure. Yeah, you're not going to survive that. If you're flooded, you got engine damage, then you're toast. As a DD, that's a death sentence. CA is still valiantly continuing to fire at me. Can it do anything? Like, threatening? No, not really. It can punch a couple of holes on my superstructure. That's about the extent of it. Oh, you also seem to have some fire issues there, dude. You might want to get that looked at. HE. Have some more fire. And then we're going to get into their really high damage numbers. That is the hunting of transports. 14 transports. Aruna. Split off. Work on this, please. These guns are actually remarkably underwhelming. It's a Mark 3, 4 inch. They're not doing as much as I thought they would. One down. Yeah, let's just clean this up, shall we? Finish that DD off and prepare to finish the heavy cruiser when you're giving the order to do so. For now, we got some transports to butcher. Do I want to sacrifice main shells for that? Why not? Why not? Boom. Although... 14k, 15k... Well, it's a really quick way to get rid of stuff. That's for sure. Oh, you surrendered! You lost more than 45% of your crew? That's been a long time since I've seen that. Do you have any kind of threat level? Some. 
slow down some. Guys, finish off quickly, because that heavy cruiser needs some attention. Three more. Pantera. Flooding from bow to stern. Dead. Surrendered. I don't... What I find interesting is that when it surrenders, it instantly stops taking damage. I mean, if this thing is flooding from bow to stern, it should just sink in the next two seconds. But the game doesn't seem to agree with me on that objective. Oh well. Um, job done. Excellent. Haruna. Fire at will. Use your mains. Of AP shells should teach this cruiser what the next few minutes are going to be like. Can you hit this from here? 23 clicks out. You can probably hit it, but you don't really need to. Destroyed funnel, several fires. 58% chance to hit. 60. Buoyancy dropping like a brick. Ship going right after it. There we go. Ship sunk. So, Task Force has been a complete success, and the mission succeeded. I didn't just get the escorts, I got the transports. And with that, suddenly... My mic pops up. Suddenly, the entire victory score for the Russians, which was 52 to 2, well, <laughs> that shifted just a bit. I still have no clue why these guys came out of Heligoland to just hit this place up, but okay. Let's just say it was some initiative taken by my skippers. Why? I don't know. Maybe they were tired of sitting around in Helgoland for years, <laughs> running exercise in the North Sea, and just decided to go off and take their own initiative, sinking a Russian task force over there. So, what else can we expect? 31 destroyers. Yikes. Um, I'm not so sure that these ships are going to do that well when it comes to dealing with 31 destroyers. So, a heavy cruiser or two... Hello, thank you. Stop zooming in and out. A heavy cruiser or two over here would be very nice to have. And right now I only have two battleships and three battle cruisers. And a bunch of submarines. Now, supposedly, you can build a ship in any port. These are only going to take 20 more months, though. So, oh, I'm way over because I'm repairing ships. Anyway. Um, no, I cannot build them anywhere. Okay, fine. So be it. So be it. I'm going to be doing some repairs. And then, hopefully, next episode, some more battling with the Russians. The minefields are coming up to strength as indicated by all these circles. And this invasion and this invasion, well, let's hope that they can be stopped. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for the next episode.